Well, we are set to make our move from the United States to Tiverton Town in Devon, England. So let's get into it. Take a look. Uh, first episode here. Uh, quick shout out to uh, one of my subscribers and one of my buddies, Sean Murphy, for helping me get set up with the uh, logo and the kits for Tivy Town. And that's in the game as of now. So we'll take a look at that as well. Roll the intro, and let's get started on the new save, guys. Well, hey guys, it's RC. This is episode one of our new Youth Challenge, Director of Football Challenge, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you haven't seen what this is about, go check out episode zero where I introduce you to the save and talk about how we're going to approach this. Uh, it's a very short video. I think it's about 10, 12 minutes long, uh, just kind of going through the structure and how I think we're going to progress with the save. Uh, always open to feedback from you guys. Looking forward to it, but let's get into it. So I've taken over Tiverton Town. They are an English football club currently uh, in the game. They are semi-professional. I don't know if that's realistic uh, to real life. If you guys know for sure, let me know. Uh, in real life, they are in the Southern League Premier Division South. Uh, we will take a look at where they are at, but they are in uh, in the Vanarama South uh, currently, uh, having just earned promotion. Uh, after last season in my save. So let's just kind of learn a little bit about them because I don't know anything about them except for what I've looked at. So they were established in 1913, uh, and they have won the, the senior division uh, several times in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, they won the senior division in 51-52, and in 56 they won the Devon Senior Cup for the first time. And I don't know if that's Devon or Devon. I'm uh, probably Devon, right? But I'm going to say Devon until you guys correct me. Uh, then they won the league again a couple of times. They play at uh, the Ian Moorcroft Stadium, also known as Ladies Mead. If anybody understands why it has two different names, it is called Ladies Mead in the game, not the Ian Moorcroft Stadium. So if you understand the difference in that, please let me know in the comments so I can learn a little bit. Uh, it does have a capacity of 3,500, which is uh, mimicked in the game, 520 seating capacity. Uh, let's see. So they, they played at Armory Park, and they were evicted from their ground and moved to a nearby rugby pitch called the Elms. And then the Elms was destroyed during World War II and they relocated eventually to Ladies Mead. They did have a club record attendance in an FA Cup match against Leighton Orient in 1994 of 3,000 people. So that's cool. All right, uh, let's take a look at where we are at. So, of course, we're over here in the United Kingdom, and here you can see the marker for Tiverton, and they are called the Tivies. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, I think that's a cool name. I think it's an interesting name. And I did say in the intro that I thought I thought it was in Wales. It whaled, I was on the right coast. Uh, and as I said in the intro, you know, English geography for 200, Alex. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I was on the right side of the country, at least. Uh, but, uh, of course, Wales is up here. Thank you again to Sean Murphy for pointing that out to me. Uh, and it turns out he is a Plymouth fan, so that's why he knows so much about the Devon area or Devon area. So if we come down here, uh, I'm just trying to see any of the cities that I've even heard of. So, of course, uh, Plymouth, I've heard of that club, uh, and then Exeter. That's about it. I don't even see any other bigger clubs out there. I'm guessing these are some nice, uh, well, decent enough uh vacation spots out here. But anyway, Tiverton is right here in the middle of the county, uh, north of Exeter, and right in the Midlands of that county. And Midlands is probably not the right term. And you're probably going, oh my God, the Midlands is way up here. 
And I'm like, oh God. <laughs> so let's zoom in <coughs> and switch to the satellite view. So we also have Tiverton Castle. That's cool. Trying to see. All right, here we go. All right, so here's the football club, and this is Ladies Mead, the pitch. They do have a sports bar, so we can get some uh, some beverages. And uh, so we've got uh, right off the A3126 and Park Hill intersection. They've got a little traffic circle. Uh, looks like we have a vet and uh, carpets and beds or pets. All right, so I live in an area where they like pets. That's an interesting... Uh, Okay, that's got to be a commercial because I see a pharmacy in there. But anyway, uh, do we have, looks like some training pitches over here, possibly. Oh, those belong to the rugby club. Uh, I wonder if we're allowed to play there. Then we have the high school. And it looks like there's another field over here. A couple of fields. Maybe that's where our training facilities are. But anyway, there is our club right there. There's really nothing. I did pop in here, and there was really nothing that we can see. Uh, let's come in. Come in, say right here. And yes, I remember Waterman's. So that is the field right back here. There you see our light spires. Kids walking to the high school. So there, that's our pitch right on the other side of that. All right, there we go. We can see uh, our our signage. And our advertisers, next match against Dorchester when this picture was taken. So, yeah, there's really, let's see, can I get in there? No, I can't. It does not, there was nothing inside the stadium, which is unfortunate. But anyway, so there we go. And there's a look at the stadium and the area. So let's just zoom out a little bit. So it looks like Piverton proper is... Over here, or to the east, so we're on the west side of the village area. It's like pretty good traffic intersections to get through there. I want to look at uh, a look at Tiverton Castle. Look at that! Oh man, that's cool. I'm a big history buff, so this this would be like my first stop. I'd be like, hey, I got to go to my new job. Oh, there's a castle. I got to go. Uh, anyway, 12th century castle. That's awesome. Uh, I would definitely have to go there. All right. So we also have to find a place to live real quick. I have figured out on my salary. So I make uh, $4,500 a month American dollars. That comes out to uh, about 3,719 euros a month. So I did just about a third of that. So we can afford about an $1,182 monthly mortgage note which would come out to about $250,000. And I found this one in Tiverton for $205,000. So we'll jump in and take a look at the pictures here. So I've never lived in an attached house before. Uh, so this is a townhouse. Uh, so that'll be a new experience for me. Luckily, this is the 20-year-old me, and uh, I would be happy to live in some place like that because at 20, I was still living at home with my folk. Uh, which, by the way, yesterday was their anniversary. Unfortunately, my mom passed away in December, so uh, Dad's first uh, anniversary uh, without her. So it was uh, kind of a rough emotional day. But anyway, we've got a nice little kitchen. Got the sink with a with a window to look outside. All right, I can make doing that. I can certainly cook uh, my frozen pizzas uh, and microwaves and soup or something. All right, we've got a living area. We've got a little elevated garden out in the backyard, it looks like. I think you guys call them gardens there. We call them backyards. Uh, nothing there. All right, there's our bedroom. It's pretty white. I'll have to wear sunglasses inside, it appears. Not a big fan of that mirror. But, uh, all right, we've got a stand-up shower, which I am partial to. I'm sure they will show us something else in there. But it's, it's a fair-sized room, it looks like. All right, there's my recording location. We'll have to close the blinds there. Uh, and uh, that'll give you, uh, you know, put, put my two computers up here. I like that. That gives me a good area for that. Oh, and then, of course, you know, I've got to have my countertop for my, uh, my stuff back here. 
Uh, so that'll be good. All right, a built-in washer and dryer and dishwasher. You don't see that a lot. I, you know, I, I think when I usually look at these, you, you don't have built-in. They're usually stackables off in a corner somewhere. So that has some uh, what I would call American conveniences. Uh, that would be maybe a better office space, just uh, you know, long narrow office that I could, you know that this would be where I would be actually doing my football stuff, right? All right, there's another look in the living room area, the living space uh, outside. So got some nice windows letting in natural light. Looks like they've uh, you know thrown the dust cover on the bed so it doesn't get dusty. That's a small TV. It looks like my computer monitor, honestly. Uh, <laughs> all right, we can make do with that. All right, there's the shower. So we've got the toilet and the sink. Oh, it has a tub as well. Is that the same bathroom? I don't think so. No, this one has a white lid. It has a brown lid. So this is the one in the master suite or the master bedroom. This would be a guest bath. This would be a second bathroom with a tub. All right, so there's, uh, you know. For my lady friends or my wife, probably my wife. Uh, of course, you know, we weren't married when I was 20. Uh, back into the kitchen, so you have your little seating area, the little tinsel tree for Christmas. That's very 1970s. And there is our little garden deck, patio area. Can't really do much uh, training in the backyard here, so it is rather small. And I believe this is the. Uh, area here, uh, or maybe this is from the driveway, I don't, but it looks like I do have a pull-in garage, because I believe this is the unit right here, so three stories, although the map says it's a two-story with a ground floor, we would call it, this would be the first floor in the states, second story, third story, so, uh, yeah, all right, well, so that's where we're going to buy and live, at least for now, till we can upgrade. You know, when we get them to the Premier League, of course, we'll we'll be able to afford something a little nicer in town. Maybe I could buy Tiverton Castle. All right, well, that is enough of that. Well, that is enough of that. So let's get into the game. All right, so the reason I chose these guys is you can see in their in history, they came up into the Bonorama Regionals in 53, so 10 years ago, and they were here for three years before being relegated out uh, back to whatever they call those lower lower leagues. Uh, so this is the first year back. They're newly promoted. They are also odds-on favorites to be relegated. So this could be a short-term save. Uh, as I mentioned, we have the their real-life kits for this current season or the one that is canceled. Uh, and also their small and regular logo. So thanks to Sean Murphy again for helping me get that set up. Let's take a look at uh, our recent schedule. Uh, we had a win, thankfully, against our second team. A uh, 2 nothing loss to Barnett. A 5 nothing defeat to Bournemouth, which was just a money grab by us. And then a 3-3 draw with Dorking. Uh, Jack Evans, Tim Cook, and Graham Williams with the goals. So just to kind of recap, this is going to be, I've got it as a director of football challenge where I have a general manager. He is the one that instigates or inst initiates all transactions, sales, uh, purchases of players. Um, so he's making offers on players. I have the right to negotiate. I also have the right of refusal uh, as manager. Uh, but then we're doing it as a semi-youth academy challenge as well. So my goal here is to bring players up from our development squad, from our U18 or U23 side, uh, whichever we have at that moment. And, you know, the, the title of the save is Play the Kids. So instead of going out and buying players for our first team, what we're going to be buying is younger players to go into our youth side and then hopefully develop them, and then bring them up into the first team. Now, I will not cripple my my, my club by, let's say I don't have a left back uh, that's qualified enough to play. 
then I can go out and I can sign a younger player. And, and I typically sign young players anyway, 21 to 23, 24 years old. So I can, if I need to, go out and sign that, you know, you know, that player for that one position that we might need. Or, you know, or it may be a couple of players uh, in, in various years. But, you know, we're going to play that by ear. But I'm not going to go out and, and sign the messies of the world to come in and play. Also keep in mind, this is coming on the back end of my DeGroff shop save that just ended. So this will be a single team save with Tiverton Town uh, as long as we can go. And hopefully we don't get relegated in the first season and in the save. Because then we'll have to restart it, I suppose. But you can see we're in 2063. So I, you know, my thing with Football Manager is I do a plus 30. I, I vacation for 30 years before I even start to play, and that way we've got all new gens, and uh, you know that's where we start from. That everybody in the game is a new gen. All the established players are gone. So you know we're basically learning on the go, and most saves turn into that. But I think when you know, oh well, I want to get uh, I want to get Ronaldinho and I want to get Messi and Ronaldo and you know and you know who to go after, it kind of loses a little bit of luster to me, uh, you know, because you end up seeing the same guys in every save for the most part. All right, let's jump into transfers real quick, and then we'll get into our first match of the season. Uh, we have lost three players that have gone out on freeze. Again, we are a semi-professional club, newly promoted, and uh, some of the, a lot of the clubs in this league are professional uh, and can actually offer wages. We can't do that. We have to. We're on non-contracts with per game appearance fees. So we have lost Dave Edgeworth. He is a right winger. So we've lost him to St. Albans. And they're paying him 1.8k a month. We've also lost Liam Molin to Salisbury on a free. He was our reserve keeper. They're paying him 975 a month. I tried to sign him. I can sign small contracts, and I actually gave him what he wanted, but he left to go to Salisbury. Macaulay Robertson goes to Broxburn Athletic on a free. He's a right back. I don't think he's a huge loss. And they're paying him 300 a month. On the incoming side, we have signed Josh Woodhouse. And, uh, of course, you see he's on a free, uh, real free. Now, he is a developmental, 19 years old, only listed as a prospect, three-and-a-half star potential. Uh, but he will train as a right back or a right midfielder. And, uh, you know. This is just what we're going after at this point of the save. And the board has approved my uh, my coaching course. I've asked them to let me train for a coaching course. They have agreed and are footing the bill for $773. And if you are not aware of this, whenever you do the license courses and when you send players off on language courses, that does cost you money. And it goes into the miscellaneous the miscellaneous uh, expenditures, and that can cost you a lot of money. So be careful with that. Uh, I think uh, Lelugio found that out in one of his current saves uh, with uh, Home USA, I believe. All right, so let's get into today's match. We're only going to have the one match because of all the intro stuff. We are opening up against Pool, and if I remember correctly, they are another recently promoted side and they are so they're recently promoted but they're expected to do well you can see we're down at 400 to 1 pool at 50 to 1 and uh evidently five five clubs can get relegated so we're going to we're going to have to do pretty well here but at least we're starting off against a relegated side now we have we have a little bit of an issue we re really don't have any true Central midfielders. We have Carl Bailey, but he's not great. He's one of the worst players on the on the team. So yeah, I, I just I was looking for a tactic that we had players that could fit, and so I came up with uh, with this one a four three two one, uh, playing with more of a deep line. Uh, McCann is actually somebody that uh, 
somebody made an offer on, we were able to get him to re-sign a contract with us. So he is going to be our defensive mid. So here's how we're going to line up. It's going to be Adam Murphy in goal. And I'll take a look at these guys. Three and a half star current, five star potential. Um, not the greatest. He's got good handling and he's good at one on ones, but nothing else really stands out, right? Then we're going to have uh, Adam Corbett on the left. Now he's 27 and he is more of a central mid or center back, but he's going to move out to the left side mainly because we don't have anybody. Uh, Sloan is a fitness issue, and he pulled some ankle ligaments. He's out for about two weeks. So we're going to have somebody playing out of position there. Uh, we're going to go with McCauley. That's going to be Hamish McCauley on the right. And, uh, boy, it makes me just want to go, freedom, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. That's Scotland, right? Scotland. So I don't know if that's a good thing to say here on a with an English club. Oh, well. Um, I'll just use American ignorance, <laughs> but uh, Amish Macaulay, Macaulay and, and Amish was his friend in the movie. Anyway, uh, right back, no pace. Uh, I could probably outrun this guy. Amish, that's not a good thing if I can outrun you. Uh, but he can actually play decent defense, but he cannot cross the ball. So those guys are going to be on support. Uh, we're going to be going with. Lucas Frazier at center back for right now. Again, Corbett would probably be in there. And then uh, Thierry Bea out there, uh, is 25 years old. And he might actually be a better right back for us, but I don't have a whole lot of quality at center back. Uh, McCann, of course, I just mentioned we've re-signed him. He's going to be our defensive midfielder. And he's pretty good all around. Of course, he's he can't run, uh, but he can potentially get the ball and then distribute it. On the left wing today, we're going to drop Grant Wilkins back into there. And he's not bad. He's five-star current, one of the best players on the team. Uh, he can cross the ball. He can actually pass the ball. So I'm expecting big things from him if we're going to be successful. On the right side, it's Lee White. And this is one of those guys... He's right-footed, but he can play both sides. So, you know, at this level, that's what we've got to look for is players that can play multiple positions. Uh, again, he's got better pace. He can actually cross the ball and pass the ball decently. Moving up into the attacking third, we're going to have John Davies, a 21-year-old Welsh player. Uh, he will be up there in on the left side. And this is one of our other better players, Jack Evans. He's 24 years old and Welsh. He can play striker and the number 10, but you can see his finishing's only a 10. But he can pass, he's got good first touch, and he's got decent pace. So I dropped him in from an attack to a support role to kind of help in the midfield here and also be a distributor up top. And that is going to leave Graham Williams as our striker, 19-year-old Welsh player, two and a half star current, five star potential, a seven finishing. Uh, and a 10 pace. I think he's our only player with double-digit pace. So that's going to be the primary tactic. I am training three tactics, but they're all all pretty similar. Uh, you know, this one is a 4-1, uh, a 2-1-2, one, two, one, two, and I think it's two center, central mids, and this one is a 4-1-3-2. So it's 4-1, and then... It's two strikers, three attackers, and one, I think, one central mid. But anyway, we're going to go with this one today. So let's get into it and see what happens. There are a couple of other guys that I would like to get in here. Um, Bliss Cot Cotterell is pretty good. Uh, I'm expecting him to play a lot. Uh, let's uh, pump the fist. We've got nothing to lose. We have signed a chief scout. I already had an assistant manager. We already had a general manager. So, And, yes, the kits look really good in here. Thanks again to Sean Murphy, one of my subscribers and a friend of mine. Let me just double-check everything here. Uh, we want to go key highlights. And we are... 
sped up a little bit during highlights. Match speed during text only. And between highlights, we want it as fast as possible. I don't know why that doesn't carry over, but it doesn't. All right, there's a little flick on header. Oh, we're in the white today, though, not the gold. All right, so they've got a gold side as well. All right, well, come on, anything? There we are. But it's going to be a pool highlight here, at least in the early going. Wilkins beat, gets beaten over the top, but he's able to cut the angle down. A good block and a good clearance. And Williams is out to the ball. And he turns on his man, breaks into space, and he takes an optimistic shot from outside the box. Could have done better there, I feel. Just a little bit. Let's encourage him. Of course, playing lower league here. Oh, my God, over the top and squared in. What a save. Oh, Adam Murphy. He's the hero of the save in the early going. What a save that was. All right, Evan, we've got a set piece. Oh, there's a big save by their keeper, Bernard, out of the box. And we've only had three shots to their seven. I'm really missing my three back set. Uh, where we averaged like 30 shots a game. <laughs> but we conceded about four goals a game with it. But we could give that another try. Bea controls it. Oh, it was a flick on by Williams, but nobody's up there to help him. This is, this is one of those I really feel personally See a lot of flick on headers and just nobody's out there. I really think oh my god, oh my god. Frazier. Frazier, what was that? Oh, don't even act like you did anything. That was because of our guys screw up. That was horrible. I mean Frazier runs on to it. He could have played it back to the keeper. Oh, that was horrid. Forward and Murphy sitting there going, holy shit, he's looking like a deer in headlights. Oh, that's just brutal. Brutal. Um, I'm going to go hands in pockets. Defenders. All right, let's just try to motivate the defender there. All right, we get the kickoff highlight here in the second half. Bea over the top. Williams with a flick on header. All right, first off, what... I'm going to switch him over to a poacher. I don't know why. Tactics is not one of my strengths. But all I see him doing is flick on headers. And when I play with two up top, that has been a philosophy that works. But with nobody up there supporting him, Oh, that was deflected. That should be a corner. Oh, no, that came off the defender. Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's encourage him again. Rathbones picked up a yellow, and evidently we didn't have any. Nothing? Nothing at all. All right, I'm going to come in and tweak this a little bit. Let's drop tempo and pass. I'm going to take off overlap. Holly is playing a 6-1. If I move by Bea out there, see, I just don't have anybody here, guys. I just don't have anybody. All right, Bliss Cottrell can play all three across the top positions. John Davies is struggling. Let's go ahead and swap Bliss Cottrell in for him. We'll make an early sub here, and he's on the pitch there. And, yeah, that was a, a stomping, and he's going to be sent off, I believe. Second yellow card. Oh, that's not good. All right, so this is what I'm going to bring in that three-back set that we played with the Groff Shop 
mainly because I need a three back setup right now. So we're going to bring that in. Uh, I do want to change these guys. All right, so we're going to go into this setup. Uh, Davies is off. Corbett has been sent off. That's the tactic we're going to use. Let's see what happens. All right, Murphy. And remember, this is the one that we did see a lot of uh, offensive ability, but we also gave up a lot of. Over the top, it's Evans on the breakaway, and it's oh, deflected by Jabrin. Uh, Evans needed to do a much better job there. Crossed in, headed out, nothing happened. McCauley. Oh, that one's just lumped, and they are on the break, and they have cut us open, but Mamola was offsides, thankfully. But boy, that's, that shows where we can get in trouble. Have we picked up another? Oh, okay, that was just a first yellow. My God. And there's a back post header by Rathbone disallowed for an offsides. Another set piece. Oh, boy, he was barely offside. Wow. All right, we're going to have to demand more. We are up to eight shots, only one on target. All right, Rathbone. And he is stomped by Wilkins, and we're going to have our second player of the match sent off with a second yellow. I do not have get stuck in on my challenges. <laughs> I swear to God I don't. All right, let's move you out to the right. You into the middle. Actually, I'm going to drop you here. Do this. I'm going to make you a wide midfielder support. I'll make you a winger on support. I'll make you a deep line forward. Yeah, you really can't. I'm going to make you a ball winning midfielder. And yeah, we'll keep you as an advanced forward. Uh, and we want to. I want to focus play down the left. Because <laughs> that's where all of our guys are, right? Oh, this is horrible. All right, Bliss Cottrell. All right, Evan. Or pass. Pauly. Oh, and he just gives it away. And Momola, he gets his goal there, and that one's going to count. Just got in front of Bea. Just gave the little touch hitter right over the keeper. That was poor. There's really not a lot I can do here being two men down. I don't remember the last time I've ever been two men down in a match. I don't know that that's ever happened. <laughs> wow. All right, we're going to have a set piece here. Evans. Oh, he was looking at that the edge of the post there just swung a little wide. Oh my god. And there's a stomp in the penalty box. So I noticed a couple of things there. So our two defenders over here, one hit the ball into the other one, which caused the ball to go backwards into our box. Okay, that's an issue. <laughs> Murphy, that was a hell of a dive. He actually got all the way to the post. I'm looking for the silver lining in this one, guys. We're down 3-0, and we are looking for shit. Yeah, so 3 nothing defeat. I'm not surprised. I mean, ugh, that was horrible. Um, no, I'm, I'm going to point the finger. I'm not happy with your performance. There's some nervous Nellies in the room. You need to get a thicker skin there, boys. And we are dead bottom of the league. Wow. And the fact that this was against another recently pr newly promoted club. So we're going to be without Corbett for his sending off. So, oh man, so even if you get... Even if your red card is for two yellows, you still get a suspension. Oh, my God. And we got seven yellow cards, and we got fined. Come on, fellas. We got to do better than that. 
All right. Well, gee whiz. All right. Hey, Infield Town. That's uh, I did them in FM nineteen, I think. Let's come back for. Uh, we'll come back for. Tell you what, we'll come back for Boreham Wood highlights, and we'll play Farnborough. Uh, that'll be next episode. So we'll come back pretty quickly here as we're trying to get acclimated to the players. We'll play, you know, that'll give me a couple of matches to see what we can do. Uh, see if we can get one of these tactics to click with the boys. And uh, we'll go from there, guys. Hit that like button for me. Subscribe for daily football manager content here on the channel. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next episode. Take care. Bye.